Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, Soylent, a new food source with Rob Ronheit, Project Soylent Director. Rob is an electrical engineer from Georgia, working for a wireless communication startup in San Francisco, California. Frustrated with his poor options for food, he set out to create a more efficient option. He's 24 years old. He has authored How I Stopped Eating Food and Mostly Harmless on the Internet. Interested persons can sign up at Soylent.me. Volunteer forms are also available at SoylentWooFoo.com. Welcome with me, Rob Reinhardt. Rob? Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me. How are you? Great. Hey, did I miss anything in your introduction? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered it. Awesome. Well, let's start in. What are the okay. challenges with today's food sources? Uh, there are many challenges. Um, people have uh, various preferences with food, and they have various goals with food. Um, I think a lot of people obviously would like to be healthy, but um, a modern lifestyle uh, leads to a very constrained um, sort of behavior around food. Uh, generally, a lot of the more, a lot of the uh, healthier options can be very expensive, very time-consuming, and a lot of people don't really have um, really enjoy the freedom that people may have used to around food. So uh, this has led to quite a dilemma for a lot of people. If uh, their lifestyle leaves them very financially and, and time constrained, they may not have the means to eat well, and uh, that could be very frustrating. And uh, I encountered this problem, and um, I, I set out to see if I could uh, solve it by creating maybe um, a non-traditional food source that uh, better fit into my lifestyle. Well, you certainly are a busy person. You're an engineer, is that correct? Yes, uh, uh, as an engineer, and I was working for a startup company, which means that I kept very, very long hours. Um, I didn't really have the time to um, prepare a lot of food. Uh, I'm, I'm a bachelor and um, admittedly a very poor cook. And um, I just I basically resented that I didn't really have the practical means to be healthy. And, um, I mean, a lot of people have... Uh, you know, superb diets, um, but it, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of effort. And uh, for someone not able or not willing to put forth the effort, um, that leads uh, that can make it very difficult to be healthy today. So that's kind of the problems that I encountered. Well, Rob, you also addressed in some of your writings on the internet of uh, the challenges that most of the world has in paying for food. Right. It's uh, right. It's, you know, it's I do also to fit my personal needs, but it's it's very much a, a global problem. I mean, food security, uh, in, especially in low-income areas, developed areas, disaster relief areas, areas stricken by drought or famine. Um, I mean, traditional food sources are extremely uh, have a have a huge impact on the environment. You know, just the tiniest quantity of, of red meat can consume vast uh, resources in terms of land mass and, and time, and um, require lots of, of fertilizer and and uh, antibiotics. It's just it seems like a very seems like a thoroughly inefficient process if your goal is just to get nutrition. Well, Rob, how could these challenges be addressed by food producers? And remember, our audience of 54,000 listeners is primarily food production managers, food mm -hmm. quality managers, food safety, and food security managers. Yes, I'd like to say that, uh, I mean, food has come a very, very long way in the past century. I, I think food processing is a fantastic innovation. Um, but a lot of it starts with the consumer, and um, if we can do a better job at educating the consumer as to how their options really affect them, rather than, you know, trying to make things that may have been traditionally familiar, um, such as, you know, a, a cheeseburger or something, maybe we can create non-traditional forms of food that are incredibly tasty and cheap and nutritious. And I think that if these options, uh, there were more of these options, even if they weren't necessarily recognizable, I think the consumer would really come around to it. Wonderful. What benefits can you see that optimal food would offer, primarily consumables? I think there are a vast number of benefits. Uh, personally, I never realized the incredible difference, uh, not only physically but cognitively, that comes from um, being in excellent health. I mean, my, my diet admittedly was pretty poor. I, I lived on, you know, a lot of uh, frozen food and, and ramen, and I, I had definitely did not have a complete diet. And essentially, I, I didn't know what I was missing. I didn't really know uh, what it would be like to be in better health, to have more optimal nutrition, and um, I feel like a lot of other people don't realize it as well. I think there would be uh, huge lifestyle benefits, you know, spending less time. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people don't really enjoy the process 
of going to the grocery store and cooking as often as they do. I mean, they may enjoy it every once in a while, but may um, prefer to do it a little less. So having food that, you know, took longer to spoil or um, was, was cheaper or, or easier to prepare, if we could have these things and keep the nutrition, I think it would be a massive benefit and a massive help to many people. Well, Rob, you've certainly done quite a bit of research in your efforts to seek out this ideal form of food. What form would ideal food take? What would it look like? Um, as it is right now, it's basically a uh, daily um, no-frills packaging powder. It comes in powder form, and uh, I just add a couple liters of water. It, it fills up about a, about a pitcher every day, and that's, um, that's pretty much all I consume. And what's strange is that's pretty much all I crave. I never really feel hungry. Um, I have a pretty, my lifestyle is pretty physically and cognitively demanding, and um, it finally meets all of my requirements. So it's, um, it's, the, the idea is to be easy. There's no dishes to clean. There's no, nothing to prepare. Uh, you don't even need a heat source. It's just clean water, the powder, and then you drink it, and you're done. It's all about being efficient. Well, Rob, that certainly is a very attractive set of objectives. In your research and development of this product, which you coincidentally have named Soylent, after a movie that was a science fiction expose on an overpopulated earth in which they, the humans were consuming soylent green. And these were uh, squares, which at the end of the movie we learned were one of the components was actually human flesh. Can you tell us about your research and development steps for your product, which you've named Soylent? Well, I mean, uh, it w was kind of a tongue-in-cheek reference. Uh, however, I, I had in mind more, more of the book, which uh, in the book, actually, it is not made of, of people at all. That was in, uh, just in the movie. Um, but the idea of, you know, population is, is going to continue to grow, and, you know, um, arable lands doesn't seem like it's going to um, increase that much. I mean, we've done amazing things with uh, fertilizers, um, you know, such, such as uh, putting more nitrogen into the soil. I think... Uh, you know, agriculture and especially automated agriculture has been a, has come a very very long way, but I still think we need to prepare for, for the future. You know, with billions more people, um, especially if, if we want everyone to be adequately fed and nourished, um, we might have to rethink um, not only agriculture but food itself. So, in addition to reading the book, what other steps did yeah. you take to research in right. the development of this product? Now, um, I, I don't have formal training in, um, you know, food engineering or, or biology or, or nutrition, but, uh, you know, a lot of traditional foods aren't really, don't seem to be that complicated nutritionally. So uh, I was all self-taught, and honestly, I just used free resources, resources online, um, took online courses and, uh, you, you know, a lot of textbooks, uh, Wikipedia, open access journals. It, it was mostly freely available information, um, but... As with most things, the most valuable information came from testing it. So the more I tested it on myself, the more I really learned, and the more I was forced to, um, the more data I had to go off of to perform further research. Well, Rob, you used your modern tools, and you did your own research and development, and now you've de developed this product called Soylent. Can you describe it a little more? You described it earlier as using water, your ingredients, and simply stirring it up and serving it. Is that correct? Right. There's, there's quite a few ingredients. Um, they're, just, it's, it's, they're all a powder form, essentially, except for uh, the fats, which are oils. Um, but the quantity is low enough so that it can be mixed adequately with, the, with an emulsifier. Um, and I really did, wasn't sure um, how it was going to taste. I, I, for some reason, I expected it to taste pretty terrible. But uh, to my surprise, it's actually quite good. It's quite delicious which makes sense as from the standpoint of, um, you know, taste science, it's mostly carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are going to taste sweet. And then, you know, it also has salt and, and the amino acids. Of it. it kind of covers an, um, a very broad spectrum taste profile and ends up being quite enjoyable. Excellent. Rob, as I look at one of your web pages and how you have envisioned this product, can you tell us a little bit more about what is, are your marketing plans for Soylent? What is your vision for this product that you've created? 
Uh, the short-term vision is, is largely to meet the, um, the needs of someone a lot like myself, uh, someone who doesn't really have the means or, or even or maybe even the desire to you know spend a lot of time cooking and shopping and, and cleaning. Basically, someone that, that wants to be healthier and uh, wants to save time and money on food. That will be the initial step. Um, from there, um, is we're looking to create something truly ideal. I think it would be fantastic if we knew enough about the body and nutrition to truly create something that it would have to be personalized, but something that was truly optimal for every person. If they wanted to be an athlete, if they wanted to lose weight, if they had some um, deficiency such as iron or something, it would compensate for every individual. And then in the really long term, I would really like to use this as a source of aid for people that, um, you know, for areas stricken with uh, hunger, malnourishment, famine. Um, it's, it's a very... Uh, seems like a very sustainable, secure source of food. You know, the, it, it doesn't spoil for years. Um, it's easy to transport. It's very light. Um, I think, and it's very cheap at scale. I think this could do um, a lot of good for the developing world. Well, Rob, that certainly is a grand vision. As I think back, my grandmother, who was quite elderly before she died, was taking a liquid form of a soy mix. I don't recall the exact name. But she was administered this, and she gained weight rapidly. And she extended her life, I believe, through the use of this particular product. Do you feel that your product will extend life for people and make their lives happier and healthier? Um, well, I don't really have the data to know if it will extend a life. I'm optimistic that it will. It seems to make a lot of sense that if the body has all of the nutrition that it needs, and it doesn't um, really have to, uh, you know, waste energy on the very digestion pro digestive process. There is, you know, a preliminary research on nutrition and life extension, but, you know, it's mostly in mice, uh, and the, the trials in, in apes haven't been very promising. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't really think there's enough data at the moment to make a really informed call on nutrition and life extension or anything, but I do think that it could do a lot for health in the short run. It certainly has for mine. It certainly has for a lot of other the, of the testers that I've recruited. Um, having a perfectly balanced diet, it makes sense that it would put you in very in excellent health. Well, that's an excellent answer, Rob. And I appreciate your time today. I'd like to thank you for your time and also ask if you could offer any concluding remarks and just kind of review what we've talked about today. What are the challenges of today's food sources? Uh, mm -hmm. What are the challenges that food producers can help consumers with, what are the benefits of this optimal food you've created, and what form does your food have now, and the plans that you have? Well, given the audience, I'd just like to say that I think I see a very, very bright future for innovation for innovative food. Um, I mean, a lot of it does start with consumer. You know, we have to make things that, that they demand, but I think if we really pushed, I think we could make wonderful new sources of food that haven't really existed naturally. And I, I know that you know, people are very um, gun ho about organic and fresh and natural, but honestly, most people that I know, I certainly don't really have the money for that, and I would absolutely be willing to try something completely new, a form of food that has never existed before. You know, um, the more we understand about flavor science and, and preservatives and, um, and nutrition, I think we could just make these fantastically innovative new foods, and I, I think that we should really try to push the envelope more in food rather than trying to make things that have been recognizable in the past. So uh, I'm very optimistic about the future of food. Well, Rob, I concur with everything you've said. And as I look at children nowadays, as I see them going to school and the large percentage of them that are significantly obese, as yes. compared to when I went to elementary school, it's there's a significant change. And also the general population of obesity and the consumption of high amounts of what's called is high fructose corn syrup in a lot of the fast food type restaurants. I find that to be very disturbing. How does your product address those issues? Um, our product, you know, again, I think that a lot of consumer behavior has to do with uh, cost and convenience and, you know, something like, a lot of fast food restaurants, you know what you're getting, it's consistent, it, it, it tastes good, it's, it's very cheap, and, you know, given all those, it doesn't really, people don't really seem to think about, or given all those positives, uh, you know, the nutritional component of it kind of falls by the wayside. And I'm, um, 
I think it's a problem, and I think it's only going to get worse. Uh, you know, people's favorite foods are largely developed uh, during their youth, and honestly, it's, it's very difficult for the organic kale to compete with a double cheeseburger at McDonald's. I mean, it just tastes really good. If we can really focus more on the nutritional aspect of cheap, convenient food, I think, I really think it, it is the responsibility of the people that control the food to not just optimize something for taste or not just optimize something for cost, but to really keep in mind that, you know, people are going to make these decisions based on cost, convenience, and taste. And I really think we can we can use science and we can do research and we, and we can make foods that meet these requirements. And, uh, you know, we can have food that tastes every bit as good as the high-fat, high-salt, um, convenient food that exists today. And I think we can make it very healthy. Well, Rob, I certainly appreciate, again, your time, your energy, and your grassroots effort to change the world. I, I think it's absolutely wonderful. And if there's any other product that you have come up with in your efforts, feel free to contact me and get on the line, and we'll chat again about how you stopped eating food and you came up with this new product called Soylent. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. This has been great. Thank you. Have a great day. You too, Andy. Bye now.